Ah, microtransactions. What a horribly oily staple of the video game industry. And yet, as much as the practice of nickel and diming players who have just shelled out full price for your title is a stinky one, it's unfortunately a trope that is very unlikely to leave the conversation anytime soon. After all, with every big publisher under the sun trying to sell you skins and buffs that in bygone days would have just been unlocked as a reward for your perseverance, why wouldn't you too just jump on the bandwagon? It's certainly not the right thing, but it's apparently the done thing. Thing. Thanks to greed and avarice, the games that we're looking at today failed at hoovering up change from their fan bases and instead made consumers speak with their wallets and peace out entirely. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games ruined by microtransactions. Number 8. Chocobo GP Long story short, I am old enough to have had a copy of Chocobo GP for the PlayStation 1 and remember having a great time just sliding around as everyone's favourite Final Fantasy transport of choice. However, when it came to the recently released Chocobo GP on the Switch, damn did the devs throw me and the rest of the fan base under the bus, as this is quite possibly the smelliest example of FOMO-based microtransactions that I've witnessed in a while. Now, this is all down to the fact that classic FF mainstays like Cloud and Squall can be unlocked in this game, but only through buying this game's version of a battle pass and completing all of the activities in an allotted time before the characters go away forever. So the pressure is then placed squarely on the player to grind this game for all it's worth to get the premium currency needed for the unlocks. However, the game also just so happens to offer the option to buy some in-game currency to cut out the grind required. As after all, wouldn't it be a shame if you didn't have every waking hour of the day to play this game in order to get these well-known characters? Gah, sure would be far easier to buy them outright, huh? And you know what the worst thing about all of this is? Is that these microtransactions, they weren't actually included in the review copies that were sent out to outlets and only added in on day one, meaning that people had no idea that this was going to be as riddled as it was. Boo. Square Enix, stop. Your greed is definitely showing here and it's knocking over bloody tables. Number 7. Modern Warfare Remastered To say that the world over was considerably hyped about the announcement of a Modern Warfare Remaster would be a massive understatement, as forums were sent into meltdown over the chance to play one of the highest rated COD games ever with a brand new coat of paint and a slew of of new improvements, and for a while this seemed to be the perfect remaster, one handled with true love and care by the devs until, that is, the cracks started to show. First came the insulting slap in the face that this remaster would only be bundled with Infinite Warfare Special Editions, effectively ransoming your nostalgia through the lens of FOMO. And then came the microtransactions, which, lest we not forget, were added in after reviews came out, so the public was sold 10 out of 10 reviews for a product that most definitely would have been reviewed lower had these been in at the start. Plus, on top of this, the remaster didn't come with all of the maps that the original had and were then sold to players as separate packs down the line, meaning that we had a rather curious case of a remaster that was a pre-order bonus until it wasn't, free of microtransactions until it wasn't, with its own DLC version of the original's DLC. Confused, so was this game, which, aside from all of this grubbiness, is still stonkingly good when it came to its revitalized single player. But the rest of it, boo. Number 6. Evolve Oh, Evolve, what could have been, eh? Seriously, when I played this title at a closed-door event ahead of its release, I had an absolute blast, and you know what? Why wouldn't I? The combat was tight, the asymmetrical multiplayer was a refreshing idea, and of course I was playing as the monster, so I ripped and teared enough to make the Doom Slayer sweat. However, when taken out of this isolated bubble, the game was an absolute mess. What was truly Maya-like was the game's approach to microtransactions, as it quickly became clear that two 2K was going to make back its damn money through viciously tearing out content from the game and then selling it back to you at a premium price. To charge over 20 bucks for a single monster was a joke. To deem weapon skins worthy of their $5 price tag each was simply tragic, and it cut the legs out of what was an otherwise pretty solid monster hunt experience. With season passes and other content coming out alongside, it wasn't long before the game was so bloated with microtransactions and DLC that the game balance was then thrown out of the window by players using DLC characters and monsters that had infinitely better skills, thus turning Evolve into a franchise evolutionary dead end. 
Number 5. Star Trek Trexels Long before EA's Dungeon Keeper abomination was stinking up the joint and Final Fantasy All the Bravest showed how little respect Square Enix had for its fans and their disposable income, a little title for iOS called Star Trek Trexels was making a name for itself for all the wrong reasons. Now, on paper, the game sounds like an absolute blast. Build your own crew, manage your own ship, tackle adventures and solve mysteries all under the banner of the classic Star Trek IP. However, things fell off the rails pretty quickly quickly as soon as you hit the second map area. I say this because it's here that the game reveals what it truly is. The paywall microtransactions arrive in relentless fashion. You are forced to wait to do everything and anything, from improving sections of your ship, mining resources, attempting missions, and buying upgrades. This game basically just put up its hand and said, nah, you're not progressing until you cough up the dough. And these weren't small wait times either, they could be hours or even days, days, to simply wait to do one action awful. Number 4. Guitar Hero Live So, imagine that you finally achieved the childhood dream of becoming a full-blown rock megastar. You've got a slew of platinum records under your belt, a monstrous crew who travel with you to make your wildest set designs a reality, and are packing sellout shows on every tour date. Now, just imagine that you've walked out on stage to a rapturous cry from your fans, who are all at fever pitch to simply have your shadow cast upon them. You approach the mic, clear your throat, and inhale to launch into your first number when suddenly you realise something terrible. You've forgotten your bloody wallet. Desperately, you search for a coin to put into this now gigantic slot that is opening up in front of you, but there are no pockets on this skin-tight leotard. Sighing with a resigned defeat, you mumble into the mic. Anyway, so here's Wonderwall and fade away into nothingness. This, my friend, was the nightmare that was Guitar Hero Live, a game that had the absolute gall to charge you real money for tokens so that you could actually choose what songs you wanted to play rather rather than the playlist that the game would actually force you through. That's right, a Guitar Hero game that made you use resources to choose what songs you played. What fresh hell is this? Number 3. Dead or Alive 6 now, while some video game developers are content to try and del boy us out of a few quid here and there, with content that arguably should have just been unlockables, Dead or Alive 6 turned themselves into a trotter's independent traders or tit of epic proportions by quite literally turning everything into a bloody microtransaction. As mind-boggling as it is to believe, Dead or Alive 6, at the time of writing, has a whopping 461 pieces of DLC on Steam. Seriously, I think the individual flagstones that make up some of the stages are up for purchase here. Not that I can check, because who has the goddamn time, patience, or indeed money to go through all of that dross? However, one thing in particular that does stick out like a very sore middle finger is the cheeky charge forced on players looking to change the colour of their character's hair, namely because this DLC isn't actually a full unlock for the colour and will charge you again if you try to change hairstyles down the line. Talk about throwing shade, right? And for those of you at home with the calculators out, this is a £55 game with, let me just uh, check the results here, oh yeah, £1,800 of DLC. Whatever you think of the actual game itself, this DLC swamp is an utter embarrassment. Number 2. Marvel's Avengers You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Now, while these words ironically come from Marvel's biggest competitor DC in the form of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, it truly fits the state that Marvel's Avengers video game found itself in, because this is a title that truly lost sight of the light. A video game comprising of the mightiest heroes in all of comics should have been a home run for Square Enix and its developers Crystal Dynamics. However, things turned very cape caught in a turbine for the project when critics started Hulk smashing the game apart for its lackluster story and weak repetitive gameplay. Now, in response to this, Square Enix hit the oh god we need to make back our money however we can button and ordered not just a slew of cosmetic items to be added to the game as microtransactions, but also snuck in consumable power-ups that shattered a promise that was made by the devs to the paying public. In the press lead into the game's launch, Crystal Dynamics promised that the video game would not be paid to win and that all microtransactions would be cosmetic. However, thanks to studio pressure, consumable buff items were placed into the game, changing the tone dramatically. When fans also noticed that patches and updates increased the grind, and thus pushed players towards buying these consumables, the writing was on the wall. In a truly pig-headed move, no official statement was released to address the outcry for months, a clear indication that the devs and the studio were just burying their heads in the sand in order to get as much 
cash as possible before reluctantly then rebalancing the game in 2021. And number one, NBA 2K13 onwards. Now this is less an example of a single video game being ruined by microtransactions and more an entire franchise becoming riddled with a parasitic desire for your pocket change. Now things started off way back where with NBA 2K13, where it introduced the game's premium currency, VC, and immediately got off on the wrong foot by placing a larger emphasis on cutting out the arduous grind of leveling up your single player character through just buying these to make your way to the top. And this leads us to the more recent titles that are legitimately asking that you shell out an additional $60 just to max out one of your players through VC microtransactions. All the while only drawing out attempts to unlock these abilities without paying to the point where it makes shelling out seem like a good idea. Not only that, but you were even asked to use VC to make trades or even manage your bloody team. That is ridiculous. It is a truly stinky model and one that 2K doesn't seem to be shying away from anytime soon. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that were ruined by microtransactions. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself with love and respect because you deserve all of the best things in life, all right? And don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, okay? You're a massive ledge and I want you to go out there and smash it today. Consider that to be a little microtransaction, a positivity that you didn't even have to pay for, free of charge, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.